Hey guys, and welcome to my first video, Meet the Protoss. In this video, we're just going to be going over all of the Protoss units, buildings, and what they are capable of, all their special abilities, and stuff like that. So we're going to go through the very basics, because I know that some people haven't actually played soccer before and want to learn it. So this is the building we start with. This is our Nexus. This is mainly like our base building. Um, and there are two resources in the game. We have minerals, which are these little blue crystals, and we have Vespian gas, which is the... Um, green gas geysers at the side here, you can pick them up from there. Uh, the protos all start with some probes, and these are our builders and our miners. So you can see I've got a lot of probes right here mining my minerals, so my minerals are increasing at the top. Now, the first thing you want to know is, I'm going to go over the resources first, just to make that very clear, then we're going to go over how the building structures work. So it's, you basically, to mine your minerals, you just box all your probes, and click a mineral patch and it will automatically split for you and just ma keep continue mining throughout the game for you so it's very easy to do and um, when you want to go and get gas you want to click one of your probes because they can build your buildings for you and you build a gas geyser on just one of the gas the hockey is VA and that will allow you to bring in some additional Vespian gas to allow you to tech up and build even stronger units as you can see, Vespian gas is very limited. There's only two slots compared to the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine slots for the minerals. So that's just something to be aware of. I'm um, just going to go over firstly before we go up to the units is the Poros abilities. Um, the Poros have this blue bar above all their healths. That is a shield bar. Um, the shield will regenerate slowly over time, well actually quite quickly over time, whenever Protoss units are not in combat. However, that is the only thing that regenerates. Whenever Protoss players lose their health, it will not regenerate. So if I give you an example, actually, yeah, we'll do that quickly. So if I attack this probe and take the shield away, and some of its hit points, you will see here at the bottom, if you can see that, that he's on 15 out of 20 health, and the shield will start regenerating within 3 seconds, there we go and the shield will start regenerating, but the health will not. So that is something you want to remember whenever micro your Poros units, you want to keep your Poros shields alive. Secondly, the um, the racial economic bonus for Poros is the Krona Boost. Oh yes, there's the guys in gas to show you that. You get three in the geyser, and that'll mine, excuse me, that'll mine gas for you. The um, racial ability is Krona Boost, so here's an exit, that's, that's what you build your probes out of. When you use a Krona Boost or not, the, pro the probes will build 20 or 50% faster. So that is something that's very important to um, remember to keep using that Kona Boost. Kona Boost speeds all buildings of the Protoss up by 50%. And um, as you can see, you can speed up all units at once here. It's pretty cool, actually. Um, so that's very helpful for that. So if we have scroll down here, this is what a full functioning Protoss space will usually look like. You've got your two gas going up, you've got your Nexus. Sometimes that'll be Kona Boost too, you've got like, just a full encounter to protect yourself. Um, and a do some detection that you're natural. So this is just um, what a fully functioning base will usually look like. So we're probably going to go down now into the unit section. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do this in order of tech routes. So as you can see here we have a gateway. This is our standard, um, actually we're going to bring that, we're going to close that up. So that's not how it looks like when you first get it. And each unit beside each building will show what building you need to actually place it. And oh, and well, I'll explain that in a minute. So the first unit you get from the gateway is the Zealot, which is this powerful melee fighter here. They're well known for that charge ability that they have. If I can get them to use it, I think we have to find an enemy to use it. But they will charge headlong into combat. They're very tough. Look at their attacks. Look at their damage. They're pretty good for tier one. Probably the strongest tier one unit in there, but they are only melee centric. They do have a charge ability, which isn't actually working at the minute, because I think I need to do it on an opponent, but it's still very deadly nonetheless, and they come out from the gateway, which can be morphed into a warp gate later on as a research from the 7 Uh Second up, we have the Sentry. This is a, like a fighter, like a, not a fighter, sorry, a support unit. It has some, a number of very, very nasty abilities, such as the ability to make force fields, which are impossible. You can't get through force fields. Um, you can make a shield, which will take how much damage? It creates a range four aura that reduces incoming range damage to friendly units by two, so it absorbs two percent two damage from all range units in the game. And they also have an hallucinated ability, which means I can hallucinate almost any um, Protoss unit in the game. So I can hallucinate myself um, an army of zealots that aren't real. As you can see, they're kind of ghost zealots, but to your opponent, these will look real. So it's actually pretty deadly if your opponent doesn't have detection they can actually um 
you can actually create an army of fake units and absolutely fill them. So that is something that you can use in your games. And that's basically our sentry. Here we have our stalker. He's our range support unit. It's actually a pretty good. It's basically the dragoon from StarCraft One. Pretty good unit. Uh, nice. It's not strong, but it's got a very good. Um, well, it's not very durable, but it's got a very good range attack. Um, it also has a very neat blink ability, so you can teleport it every 10 seconds into um, what's it, 10 yards, is it? But it's about, it's about, a, it's about a 10 yard range. I'll show you the range from it now. It's from here to there. It's about that range. That's actually pretty good. Nice range support unit. So your standard um, Protoss armor will have look something like this. So you've got your standard uh, Zealot charge, your force fields, you can move in, you've got your range support from the stalker, so that's pretty good. Uh, Okay, so yeah, to build the sentry and the stalker, you do need to have that 79 core up. That is the second building after the gateway that you would be building. Now, this is the next building. To make any of these two, you need to have the Twilight Console, which is mainly just for upgrades. You can't make any units from having that. Um, next up, we have the High... What is it? The Templar Archives. This allows us to create my favourite unit in the game. This is the High Templar. High Templars have a number of abilities, which I can't show you. This is called Feedback. It drains all points of energy. Energy is these purple bars underneath the high temper. You see the high temper have 200 energy. So if I use a feedback on it, the feedback deals one damage for every energy and drains all the energy. So feedback will initially one shot this high temper because it only has 80 overall life points with um, 40 shield and 40 health. And um, because he has 200 energy, the feedback would deal 200 damage so it'll be a little bit of an overkill so that's a very very nasty ability there for the high templars they also have my favorite ability in the game which is called side storm very very deadly ability does a lot of damage so it's a very very strong ability great for mass pumped up units we have these dark templars which are absolutely they look at the damage these guys do look how fast they can do damage to that and they're permanently cloaked they're basically harassment units extremely powerful but they're extre they're also they haven't got many hit points and their defense is very low but they are permanently cloaked so you need to have detection to um, see them now the thing about the protoss is these gateways once they're warped into um warp gates after researching at the seven x core protoss units can warp in units anywhere they choose into their pylon power so if you have a pylon nearby you can literally warp in a massive army depending on how much supply you have, right on the spot, and you've got an army ready to go. So that's one little cool feature of the push, you can um, warp in units anywhere you have pylon power, so if you're being attacked over here, whatever, you can warp in units here, and oh, we've got being attacked over here, so you can warp in units there. So you've, got, you've got, sort of got a mobile warp in area, which allows you to get them to places a lot faster, and get some units there faster. Static defenses, we have our photon cannons, pretty good um, defense units. <laughs> Trying to figure out how to stop them there. Um, they also detect, so it's very good for preventing Dark Templars. Um, pretty good center of defense, you'll want to put them at your expansions just to keep them safe. So, yeah. Over here we have our Stargate, this is where we create our anti-air. So we have a Phoenix here, this is our anti-air fighter. And he has a number of abilities, he can do, well he has one ability called the Graviton Beam. He can lift up units and remove them from play for a temporary amount of time. It also allows you to attack with other Phoenix, because Phoenix are only air-to-air -air combat. So that is called the Graviton Beam. Great for picking up things like Seeds Tanks. Um, they can't pick up massive units, but they can pick up most units on the ground. Great for picking up Seeds Tanks, Sentries, um, and you just like that. Here we have the Void Ray. The Void Ray is actually quite unique in the sense that the longer it fires on a target, the more damage it does. So that beam actually is going to come very... As you still see, this health is jumping faster there. See, it's jumping faster. The stronger the end, the longer the avoid rate attack, the stronger it gets. It's great for it. It's got, it gets a bonus against massive units, 20% of a bonus, which is pretty damn good. And um, in mass numbers, these four days are really, really powerful. So that's our Stargate. Now, you can build a fleet beacon as a tech route down the um, Stargate. And we can build out the carrier. The carrier is sort of like a... Um, it's, I can't remember the ship in Command Conqueror. It's the one um, that fires out all the interceptors. So that's basically what the uh, carrier does. It will fire all these interceptors. Um, that is basically its attack. So it's pretty cool. I'm probably going to kill my Phoenix back in there. Oh, I'm going to kill it. Yep, they killed it. Uh, so as you can see, it is quite powerful. That was just from one launch of the interceptors. You can actually train more interceptors by just having them trained in the queue down there. Sorry about that. Okay, here we have the robotics bay. And here we have the observer. This is the pro this is our Protoss detector unit. Um, as you can see, if we bring it into the fog of war here, it will give us line of sight. It will also detect enemy units such as the um, 
Burgeons, Dark Templars, Cloak Banshees, Cloak Ghosts, etc. So that's our Observer also keeps an eye on the enemy base for you, so you can have a quick look at it. So it's a pretty good unit. Here we have the Warp Prison, very, very unique um, unit. It is also a drop ship, as you can see, we try and load units into it. It can drop, pick them up, and it can drop them in the enemy bases. And as you're picking them up cliffs, you can just drop them down. The unique thing about the Warp Prism is once you've done a drop, you can turn the Warp Prism into a um, matrix and you can start warping in more units because it, it makes pilot on par. So that is something very unique with the um, Warp Prism. The Immortal is a very, very tough unit. Um, it's got 100 shield, but whenever a strong attack comes into it, um, it activates its shield, meaning it takes a maximum of 10 damage per attack depending if the attack does any more than 10 damage, so that's our, our mortal has a very nice attack. It's excellent against things like seed tanks because of that shield. It's made strength, it's a shield, it's attack power isn't great, but um, it's great against armored. I think it gets a bonus against armored if I'm right. Yes, it gets a, wow, it gets a plus 30 bonus against armored, so it's a great unit for taking out um, things like tanks and stuff, so it's really good. Um, once you have a robotics bay facility, sorry, you can make your robotics bay, which will allow you to create the Colossus. This is a Tari robot, absolutely deadly, really strong attack here. AOE attack one.